Today on Brewed in New York, we take you to the place where the Hudson and the Mohawk meet, where the Thruway and the Northway intersect, and where New York's beer history was born. This is Brewed in New York, the capital region. Discover even more local foods and beverages at Taste New York locations throughout the state. Whether you're at a state park, sporting event, or stopping at one of our New York welcome centers, it's never been easier to choose local and buy New York. Unilam, a family-owned business in upstate New York serving the building industry for over a century. You can spot Unilam's finely crafted timber products in breweries throughout New York State and beyond. Learn more at Unilam.com. 1886 Malt House. Proudly partnering with New York's finest grain growers to produce locally sourced, high-quality malt for farm and craft breweries. The Northeast Hop Alliance. Farmers, brewers, and educators working together to provide high-quality, locally grown hops to craft beer consumers in New York and the Northeast. New York's capital region is rich with culture. Albany, the state's capital and most historic city, is a hub of government activity. And the neighboring cities of Troy, Schenectady, and Saratoga each add their own unique character to the region. Tourists are attracted to the area's state parks, museums, and entertainment. When you visit, you'll want to make sure to spend some time at Saratoga Racetrack, catch a show at the historic Proctor's Theater in Schenectady, get a selfie in front of that funky egg at the Empire State Plaza, and take in the architecture of Troy, named one of the most perfectly preserved 19th century downtowns in the country, and the home of the real Uncle Sam. I did not know that. It's true. As one of the country's earliest settlements, Albany has a vibrant history dating back to the 1600s. And that story has included brewing beer from the start. In fact, in the 19th century, Albany was the second largest brewing town in the world next to London, England. One of the area's family breweries dates back to 1786 and has been brought back to life by a descendant of the original owners. Maya visited C.H. Evans to learn all about their revitalization story. I'm here at the Albany Pump Station, and this impressive building was constructed in 1874. It's now home to the rebooted C. H. Evans Brewing since 1999. Come with me. I'm Neil Evans. I am the proprietor here at the C. H. Evans Brewing Company at the Albany Pump Station. The brewing culture in Albany, back around the turn of the century, 1900, there were breweries everywhere. Even in uh, my hometown of Hudson, New York, there were three separate breweries. But my family did have the largest brewery in the area. Knowing my family legacy, there was always something in the back of my mind saying, wouldn't it be fun to reopen the family brewery? Oh, that'd be a, a fun thing to do. And as it turned out, it was much, much more than that. After learning as much as he could about the craft brewing and brew pub business, Neil found the perfect place for C.H. Evans 2.0, an abandoned water pumping station in downtown Albany. I sat down for a drink with Neil to learn more. Here's our beer sampler. Oh, it looks wonderful. Oh, it is uh, eight of our beers. Okay. And the brewers have uh, put them in the order of the least full body to the most full body, so they normally recommend that order. Okay. Uh, we do like to point out that people are a brown ale. Okay. It's an American brown. It's won three golds, the Great American Beer Festival, oh, and a bronze nice. of the World Beer Cup. And, Congratulations. Yeah, and we do consider it our flagship. I'm actually going to start with your signature beer, if I may. It looks wonderful. Hmm. Well, that's fantastic. Now I have to ask, 
about this gorgeous atmosphere because it's set up in such a way that's so inviting. Tell me a little bit more about this place. I'm looking around, I'm seeing this massive hook right there. Is that just decorative? It is definitely not decorative. Okay. That hook was actually installed in this building in 1905, and it was used to pick up pieces of the water pumping engines that were in this building at that time. Okay. It was used up until 1930 when this was a pumping station. When we bought the building in 1997, okay. you know, everybody said, when are you gonna take those out? Right. And I'm going, why would I want to take those out? I mean, they're, they're part of the fabric oh, of this they're, building. They're amazing. And as amazing. it turns out, those giant bridge cranes were totally functional. Oh. We actually used the bridge crane in the dining room to set every single one of our fermenters on the mezzanine level. People must be in awe when they come in here. When somebody walks through the front door, if they've never been here before, they walk in and they look up and their mouths open. So we know they're new. It's strange because it has an industrial look, but at the same time, it's really cozy. But that's not how you found this place. I mean, what did it, it obviously didn't look like this. Was it love at first sight or was yes. it like, was it Absolutely really? Absolutely love at first sight. I would love to know what you feel is your secret to success because obviously you guys survived the Great Recession. I have a theory it's because I can see the passion coming through, but what else do you think? It, it is passion. It's pure and simply passion. I did not get into this business because I wanted to get rich. Right. I got into this business because I had a passion for beer. I love that. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. You have a wonderful, friendly staff. Everything is so warm and welcoming. So cheers. Cheers. Neil's entrepreneurial spirit is seen throughout the business. Brewing operations manager Ryan Dimmler prides himself on the experimental brewing culture he's helped establish at C.H. Evans. There are literally thousands of styles of beer, and then there's millions of ways that you can play with those things. The goal is constant exploration and drinking our way around the world without having to leave Albany. When a Hudson Valley beer historian initiated a project to revive a traditional recipe, he knew C.H. Evans would be up for the challenge. Craig Gravina, who's a local beer historian and enthusiast, approached us in 2013 to work with him on this project, bringing back to life Albany Ale. Albany Ale was a truly indigenous style to the upper Hudson Valley. Craig and I sat down, went over the recipe, and then tried to recreate it as true to style as possible. So we roasted the malt in-house, we did a cereal cook of corn, and we used some New York grown six row barley brewed it. It was really, really dry, pretty bitter, but it was a really nice way for us to reach back into history and do something that was so locally specific. And we got such great support and response from the city. Given that Albany has such this great, long, illustrious history of producing beer, to be able to bring it back and talk about it and engage the public about it, we got a ton of non-beer drinkers that came in just from the, the interest in historical aspect, which was really nice. Craft beer is more than just an industry, it's more than just a job, we're not just guys that make something. As a craft brewer, and in particular a New York State craft brewer, it's very much a community, it's a, it's a cultural, I'm like actually getting goosebumps talking about this, craft beer is such an incredible movement. I feel like I owe a lot to beer, I mean yes, thank you beer for college, I appreciate it, it was great, but to be able to find an industry like this where you have a, a, a really unique shared experience in terms of everybody can appreciate the challenges that we have and the victories that we have. And at the end of the day, like we get to provide happiness for people. While there are hundreds of different types of beers, they all basically fall into two different categories, ales and lagers. So what's the difference? Look to the yeast, my friends. Ale yeast, or in Latin, sars cumis in cervici. Yeah, that one. Has been around for thousands of years and originated in Europe. Ale yeast is top fermenting yeast. It does its magic at warm temperatures in about seven days. The resulting beer is generally robust and is best served not too cool, around 50 to 55 degrees. Lager yeast is actually a hybrid that comes from about as far away from the birthplace of beer as you can get. Patagonia, South America, home to these guys. It's a relatively new arrival on the beer scene, pitching a ride to Europe just 400 years ago possibly on the backs of bees. 
Lager yeast, which hangs out at the bottom of the fermenter, thrives at low temperatures, usually around 40 degrees, and takes a long time to do its work. Before the days of refrigeration, lager was stored underground for weeks or even months while the fermentation process took place. Lagers tend to be smooth, crisp, and more subtle in taste and aroma. They're also best served cold. In the 1880s, with the advent of commercial refrigeration, lagers started to become the American beer of choice because who doesn't love a cold brewski while sitting in the hot sun watching baseball? However, with the recent resurgence of craft brewing, ales have made a strong return to the public palate. The geographic location of the Capital District is what made it such a perfect hub for the brewing boom of the 1800s. When the Erie Canal opened in 1825, Albany's position at the intersection of the canal and the Hudson River made it the perfect place for importing ingredients from the West and exporting finished brews to the city. By the 1850s, Albany's Taylor Brewery alone was producing 200,000 barrels of beer a year. But Taylor wasn't the only one. So thirsty was the country for Albany ale that dozens of breweries thrived in Albany, Schenectady, and Troy. After the Civil War, the opening of the National Railroad reduced demand for beer from the capital region. And then, of course, prohibition brought the brewing industry to a grinding halt. It took a long time for this region to fall back in love with its brewing roots. But one visionary couple, Gary and Kelly Brown, successfully reintroduced the city of Troy to craft brewing in the mid-90s. generally hard to find businesses that have been open more than 20 years, but it is uncommon in New York's craft beer scene. Many of the breweries we visit on this show opened in the last few years as part of the state's craft beer awakening. But when the Browns opened their tap room in 1994, brew pubs were a foreign concept to New Yorkers. Luckily, young people in the region embraced Browns brewing and flocked to this unique Troy destination for celebrations and first dates. Now, 24 years later, the Browns business has grown by leaps and bounds, and their loyal customers have grown up with them. Their recent expansion, the Malt Room, caters to those lifelong patrons now looking for a more sophisticated craft beverage experience. What do you say we go inside and see what we can learn from the pros? I'm Kelly Brown. I'm Gary Brown. We're the owners of Brown's Brewing Company, and we've been in business here for 24 years. My first experience with, with craft beer was through Gary. I consider myself a, a 1980s home brewer, if you will, and that led to traveling mostly out to the West Coast because this is where the resurgence of craft brewing was happening. Experiencing what was going on out there was important to be able to start this project. We found this beautiful old abandoned building in Troy and he said, I want to do this. And I said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm with you. People did think we were crazy. I think a lot of people didn't think we would even get the doors open, much less make it in business in Troy. It was 1990 and no one had heard of, you know, brew pubs here on the East Coast. We may not have realized the extent of the risk, which I think maybe when you're younger, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a blessing that you don't know. <laughs> Looking back, it's pretty impressive what we did manage to accomplish. One reporter described us as a landmark and it just hits me and I'm, I'm so humbled by it. I'm so proud of, of the growth in Troy. Troy has such a rich history being right on the beautiful majestic Hudson River. That's really important to, to New York State. Hopefully we helped open some eyes to people that eventually have come here to settle, either to live or open businesses or what have you. It's a great place to live. There have been a couple of beers that we just know we can't do without. Uh, oatmeal Stout is one of them, and it's great to have a beer like that in a heavily IPA-flooded market, so it sets us apart a bit. We have uh, two tap rooms, one in Hoosick Falls and one in Troy. We have Revolution Hall, our event space, and we have this beautiful space, the Malt Room. In 2012, we uh, decided to build out this space and kind of work on our relevance going into our 20th year at that point by showing off what we can do through Casca produced beers and also fine liquors, wines, and things of that nature. We have more than a handful of customers that have been with us 
from day one. And I love the malt room for the idea that a lot of them, you know, the loud music that was really appealing to the younger days. Our music down here in the malt room is, is no louder than a conversation. So it allows people to enjoy both spaces for various reasons. So Gary's gonna tell me a little bit about cask beer. I'm sitting in front of a full pint of pale ale poured out of a carbonation controlled uh, traditional tap. And Gary, you're gonna pour me um, another beer um, from the cask. Okay. Right through this beer engine, drawing it from the cask below the bar. How hard do you have to pull that thing? Oh, not too hard. If I pull it too fast, I might put too much foam in it. Yeah, and so you manually pumped that up. That is not pressured down below. You really pulled right. that beer up. You're actually drawing it out of the cask, where this is being pushed by carbonation, by CO2, I should say, um, through the draft lines, through the faucet, and into your glass. That is an amazing pour, and I can yeah. see in the head that there are larger bubbles, and it's dissipating a little more quickly. Right, exactly. And the temperature is a little different, so this is, you know, ice cold out of your taps. Yep. And this one is cold, yep. but not as cold. Right, you're looking at about a 20 degree difference in temperature there, mm -hmm. which is, uh, again, a traditional way uh, the beer would have been poured from the cellars of a, of a London pub. Mm -hmm. And even just that few degrees uh, warmer, I'm getting so much aroma out of that. Yeah. I mean, there's, I can tell the flavor's gonna be big. Yeah, so. uh, temperature and beer ha have a huge impact on the aroma and the, uh, the taste notes that you're, gonna, that you're gonna get from it. You know, some bars will have a, a cask every once in a while sitting on top of the bar, but you have built in a temperature controlled three handle system. I mean, yeah. someone can come here to historic Troy, New York, yeah. come to the malt room and have an authentic beer poured in the way it would have been poured 100 years ago. But you're correct. I mean, Brown's Brewing is the 22nd brewery to operate in the city of Troy. Hmm. Yeah, we were the first brewery to operate in 40 years when we came on board in 1993. Wow. Gary, thank you so much for the information um, and the experience of getting to drink ale right out of the cask. Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to show this off, and um, it's what makes it you know, worth coming to work in the morning. Offering casks to me is just another adventure in brewing, and it allows our brewers to um, expand their horizons, and we present that to our customer. We surround ourselves with the best positive group of people that we can surround ourselves with and try to do the best we can do. And at the end of the day, if you've done the best you could do for your customer, your employee, you know, just pick up a pint and, <laughs> and celebrate that. Cheers. Cheers. At Brewed in New York, we really appreciate finely crafted beverages. But please remember to always drink responsibly. Here's a tip. Mini bars offer small glasses for sampling different types of beers in moderation. When you visit a brewery, appoint a designated driver or use public transportation. Never drink and drive. You know, Maya, one of the greatest things about the Capital Region is the diversity of the downtowns. That's true. Broadway in quaint Saratoga Springs has a completely different feel from Broadway in Albany's Warehouse District. And yet, there's one brewery that operates on both. Druthers Brewing Company. Started by three brothers working in law, finance, and marketing, each had unique skills they knew would go well together in family business. And what better business to take on than one they'd rather be doing? Brewing beer. We're standing outside Druthers Broadway location in Albany's newly revitalized warehouse district. Right over my shoulder, you can see the city's beloved 28-foot dog, Nipper, sitting on top of the former RCA building. Throughout the 1900s, Nipper and a gramophone served as a logo for a number of audio recording brands. As a handsome pup and definitely worth a picture, but these days, people come to the warehouse district for the burgeoning bar and restaurant scene. Let's go into Druthers Brewing Company, take a taste for ourselves. Probably never know by looking at it, but this gorgeous brew pub was once a plumbing supply warehouse. Brothers Brian, Chris, and Scott Martell opened their first location on Broadway in Saratoga Springs in 2012, but it wasn't easy. 
In 2007, my brother Brian and I came up with the idea to launch a brewery. I just love the, the concept of a brew pub. I love the feel of it, the handcrafted food paired with the handcrafted beer. So here we are in, in 2007. My brother's working on Wall Street. You know, everything's starting to go downhill. And I said, why don't we do something we love? You know, something that we really enjoy doing. And at the time, we had been home brewing for about five, six years. We were talking about location. You know, I'd love to put it in Saratoga. There's no brew pub right there. We grew up here, but I do need it to be on Broadway and I need an open space. And he kind of said, you know, no, that doesn't exist. Two days later, I'm walking down Broadway and there's a guy on a big ladder and he's nailing a for sale sign onto this building on Broadway. And right next to the building is this little white gate. I look over the gate and it was completely overgrown, but all I needed was grass at that point. Something that I could envision turning into a beer garden. The property was twice what we could pay. As we're walking out, my wife said to me, all right, well, we can cross this off the list. And I looked at her and I said, you know, this is it. And we're, we're going we're gonna to do it here. But in 2009, the U.S. economy was in the depths of the Great Recession, and securing a loan was nearly impossible. I had one bank, I mean, in, in the 12 that turned us down, actually say to me, so what would this be good as if it wasn't a restaurant? When you fail, like, what could we sell this as? The brothers invested everything they had into the business, and their passion convinced other backers to come along as well. That choice to keep pursuing their dream despite the risk is reflected in the company name. The Druthers name came from the choice to go and do this. You're quitting your jobs, you're putting your retirement funds, every, everything that you have is going into this. And it was a John Wayne quote, and it was if I had my druthers, and it's a conjugation of I'd rather, it's druthers. If I had my druthers, I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. When druthers finally did open on August 1st, 2012, it became an overnight success. The location gamble had paid off. Our gate in the front of Druthers at Saratoga, it says Druthers across the top, and a lot of people walk by and have no idea what it is, but they just see the entire patio is packed, and then they come in and, and most of them become regulars. Their beer became so popular that demand quickly outstripped supply. The Brothers opened their second location in 2015 in the Warehouse District in Albany, both to serve a new crowd and to increase the scale of their brewing operations. But it's not just about the beer. The owners take great pride in their menu as well, which features a wide variety of hearty fare from wood-fired pizza to award-winning mac and cheese. Mac and cheese and beer just kind of pair themselves together, in my opinion. It's probably the best you can get in the entire world. I'm gonna go world, worldwide on it. It's phenomenal, it really is. And our chefs spent a lot of time trying to come up with the recipe. We changed it multiple times to get to where we are now, and I just think it's, it's perfect. And how is the beer, you ask? Well, Kembis turned brewer and co-owner George DePiro has already won a gold medal for a particular kind of sour beer called a Goza. This one is named the Dare. I caught up with George to talk about the sour beer craze sweeping the region and to discuss the company's plans for the future. So this is the Double Dare Goza. This is the double version of one of your flagships, which is the Dare Goza. The Double Dare Goza is a German-style sour ale with a twist. And this particular keg has two twists. The first twist is that it's almost twice as strong as a normal Goza. Gozas are normally four and a half to five percent alcohol, and this is eight and a half to nine. The next twist is that we dry hopped a bunch of kegs individually. So this keg is dry hopped with Citra and Amarillo, and it gives it a really, it accentuates the already citrus characters of this beer. Yeah. And gives it a real grapefruit kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's like a lemon presence in there because of the tartness, but then the grapefruit is, is delicious. Right, most people haven't tasted a sour beer before. Right. And they need to be warned that your first sip of this is going to be wacky. I think it's really critical to keep the sourness at a nice, reasonable level in balance with the other flavors in the beer. You should never be drinking salad dressing. This is all lactic acid that's doing this. The bacteria I use make lactic acid the same acid that's in yogurt. Right. It's a much gentler sourness on your palate. It doesn't burn your throat. And that allows the malt flavors to come through also. The sourness can, is actually very refreshing and crisp. It's not just to drink a, you know, a sour bomb. It's right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great summer beer. This is a really big space, yep. but it looks like there's space for more. Yes. Part of the vision is growth. Right. Yeah, we have room in here to put in a bunch more tanks. 
and hopefully a bottling line. That's great, and so this supplies both locations to some degree of beer, right. and then you're also sending beer to bars in the region. Right. My salesman told me that last month we sold 156 accounts. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm really pleased. Yeah. We're more successful than our business plan said we would be. That's a good place to be. It is. It's yeah. a much better place to be than discussing who's going to represent you in bankruptcy. <laughs> so that's uh, so we're happy. Yeah, that's great. George, thank you very much for inviting us into your brewery today. Thank you for coming. I'm jealous that Goza looked delicious. So good. There are so many beautiful brew pubs in the capital region. And we barely scratched the surface. I could hang out here a while. Or you can just come up for the day. It's a short train ride from New York City. And very scenic. Now, if you visit our website at brewedinnewyorkshow.com, you can learn more about the places we visited in this episode, as well as other popular breweries in the Albany, Saratoga region. There you'll also find resources about tourism throughout New York State, as well as full episodes as they roll out. Follow us on social media, and we'll keep you in the loop. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on Brewed in New York.